Julian Assange is now a free man, Ditty. Yeah, that's right. After 14 years, the word he's a free man, well, sort of. Uh, free is, in any case, a word that you'll see uh, coming up a lot in the press today. This is how the US version of the Huffington Post covered it on the front of their web page today. Assange guilty plea because the WikiLeaks founder did strike a guilty plea with US uh, authorities uh, uh, that essentially enabled him to leave the UK. Uh, he's now heading or already uh, headed to the Mariana Islands to face a federal US court there where he'll have to plead guilty to an Espionage Act charge. This will essentially allow him to avoid jail in the US and make him more or less a free man after 14 years of legal limbo. You'll remember that back in 2010, Julian Assange, as, uh, as WikiLeaks founder, uh, released hundreds of thousands of classified US military documents uh, pertaining to the wars in Afghanistan and Iraq. It was the largest security breach at the time. Uh, and as uh, the Sydney Morning Herald says in its coverage today, it, it sort of made him a cause célèbre uh, among press freedom advocates. In its edition as well, the Australian newspaper uh, talking about how uh, Julian Assange has been released. He's, he's flown out of the UK. They say that he should be recognized for his services in delivering the truth. The paper noting that he managed to infuriate not just the US government, but elites from both the left and right. Uh, but the result is that the world is better off thanks to him. So the big question, of course, is what happens next? Something the conversation is looking at. That's right. That's uh, the conversation on an Australian academic website uh, looks at the implications of uh, this plea deal. Uh, and what's next for Julian Assange after years of being on the run? Uh, they noted that the plea deal could set a dangerous precedent. Assange is accepting guilt under the Espionage Act. That is a federal crime, meaning that someone who does nothing more than receive and publish information could potentially also be convicted in the future under the same law. So there is a, a somewhat of a dangerous precedent set there. Let's move uh, back to France for this next story. The far-right National Rally Party unveiling its programme ahead of uh, snap elections on Sunday. That's right. The Guardian is focusing on this. There's a lot of international coverage today. The Guardian looking uh, in its editorial pages at uh, those promises uh, revealed by Jordan Badala, the leader of the far-right National Rally Party, ranging from cutting energy taxes to abolishing the automatic citizenship of uh, French-born people. Of course, immigration is... Uh, that, that, that program is very heavy on anti-immigration measures. Liberation, the left-wing paper, not surprisingly, uh, lambasting this program as 100% pure bait to uh, lure in French voters, as the paper says. The National Rally's program is, quote, obscure, unrealistic, and even illegal, the paper decries, and the program is spearheaded by the party, which still counts, I quote, many racists, many anti-Semitics, and conspiracy theory theorists among its ranks. For the uh, business paper, Les Echo, the French business paper, uh, the program that was put forward by the far-right party uh, is simply embryonic or at an embryonic stage, meaning that it is not at all uh, well thought out or developed. While uh, Le Monde uh, in its paper notes wryly that the program they put forward uh, seems to uh, borrow a lot of ideas from Emmanuel Macron's politics, perhaps a deliberate strategy to draw in centrist voters to, from Macron towards the far right. Now, this last story from GT, I have no idea what it's about and I'm intrigued. Uh, a museum in Australia has found a way to seek revenge on a court that uh, ruled that its ladies' lounge was discriminatory to men. Yeah, that's right. So I'll, uh, this needs a bit of an explainer, uh, Stuart. So uh, the Museum for Old and New Art, on Mona, is in Tasmania. And in, back in 2020, an exhibition space was created called the Ladies' Lounge, a women's only area where women visitors could come be pampered by male butlers, drink champagne, and uh, enjoy fine art amongst ladies only. The whole point was to evoke men's experiences of being uh, excluded, except that one man actually took the museum to court last year after being denied entry. A Tasmanian court then ruled in his favor, saying that the ladies' lounge is indeed discriminatory to men. Uh, and they were given 28 days to stop refusing men access. It eventually led to the closure of the ladies' lounge. But the question is, what do you do with all the Picassos that are in the ladies' lounge? Well, they found a novel idea. They put them up in the ladies' toilets. 
um, which up to that point had been uh, gender mixed, but obviously now has become ladies only. Uh, but I actually want to end on another male meltdown story of a different kind story. This is uh, the Washington Post, which uh, reports that a wax sculpture, a six foot tall wax sculpture of Abraham Lincoln, America's 16th president, was installed on the campus of an elementary school in Washington. It was meant to be a message about the Civil War era and its aftermath. In the end, it became victim to Washington's heat wave, melting under oh. scorching temperatures. As the Washington Post notes, by Monday morning, Abe's head was gone, his left leg separated from his torso and his right foot a blob, I quote. Oh, that's really sad. All I've got now is images of that in my head <laughs> and Picasso's falling off of cubicle walls because you can just imagine when the doors slam, they'd be on the floor, wouldn't that's they? That's right, that's no right. Time at all. <laughs> it's even the papers off, right, 24.